Batista. I'm not a very smart person, <laughs> but I do understand football. And, uh, and I love football, and I study football, and uh, that's all I can do. I, I remember um, it was after Clemson. Uh, my son was going to be a seventh grader, and I, and I told my wife, I'm done. I'm going to go coach my son. I haven't seen him grow up. I haven't seen him play football. And I went back. I came back to Baton Rouge. And I went to Central High School. And, and, and I spent every day with my son, teaching him to be a quarterback and everything else, you know. And so, and then Coach Tuberville called me and said, hey, would you like to get back in? And I did, you know. So uh, I've had great coaches, I've had great high school coaches, great college coaches, Coach McClendon, Coach Sonny Jackson, John McCann, Mac Fall. I had great coaches. And, and, and I saw their passion in the game, everything else, and that's what I wanted to be. You know, I was at, I was at the Philadelphia Eagles for one year, and and I got I got cut. And I, I went and talked to Coach Dick Vermeil, and I said, Coach, I know what I want to do. I want to coach. And he allowed me to stay for an extra month, just to sit in meetings, and watch and watch them game plan and watch them and. That was the best experience of my life, I'm going to tell you. But the, he, he let me, he actually paid for me to stay there and, and, and let me go to meetings and everything else to learn football. Uh, I actually went to the game, but, uh, you know, um, uh, yes, uh, exactly what you're saying. I, I, I went to the ball game and I actually spent the first quarter on the sideline and then went back up in the stands, and uh, I, I, that's all too close for a meal, I'm gonna tell you, a special person. I got notebooks, I'm talking about books, that everything Dick Vermeil said, it was a special time because Dick Vermeil was there, Ed Hughes was office coordinator, and Sid Gilman was a consultant. So I, I'm just sitting there soaking it all up. I'm, I'm just, I'm doing nothing but writing notes. I, I just, and uh, the knowledge in that room right there was special. Uh, to be honest with you, I lost them in 16 flood. <laughs> I did. I, 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 I had four or five notebooks, and, and 16 flood, I had them, and I lost them in the flood. Th yes, they are. Yeah. Yes, I, I do. I, I, you know, we have great receivers. I mean, we're, we're fortunate this year because we have we have talent around him. We have great receivers. We have great running. Backs. Clemson has great receivers, great running backs. But the difference in the game is the quarterback. Uh, I say what you want. They they make the plays when you have to. You know, you, you, you go watch the Oklahoma game. Joe Joe Burrow made some throws, some back shoulder throws that that people don't make. And you have to have that. I mean, it's not, that doesn't happen every year. And like I said, before, uh, two weeks ago, that game, the best four quarterbacks, in my opinion, was in the, was in the playoff. The best two quarterbacks are in the national championship game. And I believe that. Because you, but, but because you spread the field, you put you put you put great athletes in space, and the quarterback has to understand the reads and has to get the ball to them, and then you get your one-on-one -on -one matchups. And uh, to, to 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 do that, uh, they have to understand the whole scheme. And you know, defense is so much more complicated, so much sophisticated that they're going to pressure you from both sides and everything. Else, and the quarterback has to understand where the pressure is coming from and where to get the ball, ball out. I'll say this, Joe Burrow's a hell of a lot smarter than I am, okay? And, and that's a fact. Uh, he, do, he does stuff that uh, I'm like, why, why in the heck did you do that? He said, well, I saw this guy doing this. I said, he's better than I am, okay? Uh, uh, it's just fun to have Joe Burrow on our side. Mm. 
There's no doubt in my mind it, it is. I mean, his dad's sitting over there telling him how, how we're going to defend you, and he's sitting there, it's just how I'm going to beat your butt, you know. <laughs> I believe that wholeheartedly. You know, I, uh, I came from a great family, but we weren't a very, we didn't have a lot of money, you know. And uh, when I got into high school, we, we would go out and we couldn't buy tickets. But I, I remember me and my buddies would go out to the game and and, and we'd hold up a, a D2 tickets. <laughs> you know? And you could get tickets for like $20, you know. My dad would give me $20 and hey, uh, and we could get in the ball game, you know, and, and, and that's it. I, but I just was amazed. I didn't, look, just walk around that stadium, seeing the people there and everything else, and actually get a ticket and walk in the ball game, it, it was exciting for me. I grew up, I, I, I grew up in the 60s. Uh, I remember the 69 team, which was, I think it was 69 or 70 team, it was a great team, and and listen to it on radio. I mean, our, our whole family would be in the living room with the radio on, listen to LSU football. That's just the way it was. Uh, Brandon Streeter, up until today, you know, was uh, a very intelligent quarterback. Very, I mean, knew what to do with the football when, when the time came. And uh, very talented kid, uh, could throw the football and everything else. And uh, you know, I, we left before Brandon had a chance to play. But uh, just like I said, just uh, just a great kid. Uh, loved that kid. I do, and, and still today, uh, was a great leader. He, 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 he's a very confident kid, very good quarterback, everything else. I didn't have a chance to coach him when he was playing.